Dr. Rohitash Gupta, the CFO of Eclux, who joins us on the show. Uh, hi, Rohitash. Thanks so much uh, for joining in. Um, first half of the year looked yeah. quite good. Uh, you had guided that, in fact, the second half may not be that good, and maybe we could see flattish revenue growth for the next few quarters. How many quarters should, could we be seeing this uh, flattish growth? And also, we're already two months into this quarter. How has it panned out? Uh, so uh, you are right that uh, we have, uh, 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 during our uh, last call, we have mentioned that the next few quarters will be flattish. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we won't be able to be more specific in terms of whether it will be, you know, two quarters, three quarters, or four quarters. But as of now, our visibility for that flattish trajectory is uh, till this financial year end, which is March quarter. Okay. So you don't expect it to spill over into F517 and therefore affecting your F517 revenue growth? So uh, let me lay out the sensitivity of that, uh, that commentary. So basically, uh, we are expecting that a lot of short-term projects that we undertook during H1 or onboarded during H1, they, will, uh, they are supposed to contractually roll off uh, uh, during some time uh, in H2. Now, it is very much possible that some of those projects may get extended, in which case, uh, you know, this flattish trajectory may move uh, by one quarter or so. But as of now, you know, uh, given our current visibility, I will still maintain that, you know, uh, the flattish uh, commentary is more appropriate for the year exit. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Rohitash, uh, just to focus on your top five uh, clients, uh, in the last couple of quarters, I think the growth has been around 6% odd. Uh, uh, the, there was talk that there was some restructuring that could take place in these uh, top five clients. Uh, has that played out? And uh, do you think that, in fact, the 6% uh, is achievable or do you expect it to come off uh, from the top? Yeah, so, uh, you know, in top five clients, uh, all our three verticals are represented. So they are clients from banking, they are clients from digital area, and they are clients from cable companies. Right. And as we see that, you know, almost all of those sectors uh, are seeing some kind of consolidation between uh, between various large companies. So you have in cable, cable sector, you have uh, large mergers being talked about. And similarly is the case in retail and, um, uh, and hospitality uh, and tech space now. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, in banking, the, the scenario is slightly different, you know, because banks are uh, selling and monetizing their assets and thereby uh, they are shrinking, if anything. So in, in all the three sectors, either, you know, consolidation is happening or breaking up is happening, and that's going to... Uh, impact us as well because some of these uh, uh, companies involved are our clients also, the large ones. Uh, Rohitash, uh, you know, post Q2, you also told us that margins will be softer in the second half of the year on account of lower growth. What could be your average margins in Q3, Q4, your exit rate for F516 for margins? So overall, FY16, if you look at the full year, I think we, uh, we are fairly confident at this point that full year will be uh, will be above 30, 30% uh, uh, operating margin. If you look H1, we have done 32%. Uh, uh, so, you know, the H2 uh, number will be closer to probably 30, 31% range, and overall year, uh, you know, it will still give us uh, comfortably above 30%. Okay, so H2 margins 30, 31%, which means F5, 16 will be 30% plus. Yeah. At the right. EBIT level. At the EBIT level, correct. Okay. All right, uh, Rohitash, also uh, your attrition, though it's manageable at around that 35% approximately, but it's uh, gone up if you just look at it on a sequential uh, basis. Uh, why is that happening? So uh, you are very right that, you know, in Q2, our attrition has been always higher right. uh, compared to Q1, and that is essentially tied to the pattern in which uh, uh, other companies hire in our sector, and also uh, it ties up with the session starts for various post-graduation courses. So that's the historical reason for why Q2 always has been higher. Hmm. And the third reason, which is very obvious, is that, you know, you complete the uh, full year, uh, in March and do the performance appraisals and give, uh, you know, the bonuses, etc. by April or May. And after that, you know, you see some exit uh, of that, and that's a normal trend. Uh, however, I will uh, like to say that, uh, you know, there are two important things to keep in mind. First is that this attrition of 30-35% that you see is more around uh, junior layers, uh, which forms the bulk of the company. 
and the second is that the jump that you saw in q2 to uh, in q1 to q2 this year is actually much lower than our average uh, attrition jump from q1 to q2 so in that sense you know we will wait and watch for a uh, few more months and i think uh, the attrition will moderate from 35% level and in which case you know it will be fairly normal uh, trend for us Okay, so attrition to moderate from the current 35% uh, level. Um, let me come back to the growth issue. Based on your current visibility, will your F516 revenue growth be closer to the top end of your 10 to 15% guidance? And early indications of what F517 will be like, um, will it be similar to what we, you know, this 10 to 15% growth in F516 also? Uh, so our as i mentioned earlier you know our visibility in terms of pipeline is only for 6 months okay. and that's why we can very clearly talk about uh, you know the year exit and the reason for that short visibility is because the way we have grown in our clients has been largely through account mining and our uh, growth is largely due to uh, due to bagging small small uh, processes uh, in our current client in concentric areas where we already operate. Fair enough. So uh, what about F516? Would it, you know, since you have visibility for two quarters, would F516 growth be closer to the top end or lower end of your guidance? Uh, so in H1 uh, versus uh, last H1, we have grown 16% organically. And if you add the CLX acquisition, we have grown 30%. Uh, even if we remain flat from here, I think we will we will uh, get somewhere above 30% uh, uh, for organic FY16 versus FY15 in dollar terms. Okay, Rohit Ash, we leave it at that. Thanks so much for joining in. So the company is um, confident at least about their margins being above the 30% mark for the full year at the EBITDA.